Hey guys, welcome back. This is Professor Hank, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use static class members in C++. Right? So let's get started. So you can have or you can use the static keyword on variables and on methods within your classes. Right? If you use a, the static keyword on a variable within your class, that changes that variable from being a instance variable or a variable where every single object that is an instance of that class is separate right, where each object has its own separate copy to a variable that all objects share, okay? So it's a way that you can have uh, multiple objects share a single memory location in a, a relatively safe way, right? Um, so that's that. I'm going to show you how to um, create that. I'm going to show you how to access it. I'm going to show you how to initialize it, all right? And the other thing I'm going to show you is static methods, right? So if you put the static keyword in front of your method definitions, for your prototype, um, then what's going to happen here is that that method is going to be able to be invoked or be used without having to create an instance of that class, right? So you can use methods from that class even though you don't have any objects in memory of that class. So let's go ahead and look at some code. Okay, so I've got Visual Studio all fired up and ready to go. So let's just go ahead and write a silly little class with just enough elements to demonstrate what we're talking about here. And um, we'll have some public stuff. And I guess I'll start off with the uh, static method first because that'll be easiest. So you just add this static keyword in front of the method and you can call this method on its own. It's as if it was its own static or as, as if it was its own standalone function. It's just defined within the scope of class foo. So for example, I could do something like this. Right? I'm just making a simple little function just to show you what this looks like. Okay. Now normally, you know, if I was to write a method like that, I'd have to first create an instance of a of the foo class, right? I have to create a foo object. And then I have to do the f.add, right? But I don't have to do that when the method is static, right? So I can do something like this, okay? And what you do is this is a little different. You're not going to do like f.get uh, here because there's no f variable, right? So what you do is, is you use the class name and then as a separator between the class name and the method, use the scope resolution operator, which is these double colons, right? And so then you can use that method as if it was its own standalone uh, function, you know, just defined outside of a class, okay? So don't have to create an instance of foo to be able to use a static method, okay? So that's the first thing. So next thing I wanna show you is um, static variables. And these are variables that can be accessed or that will be shared across all instances of the class. So for example, I might create um, a variable called count, okay? So I'm putting that static keyword there, so static int count. So what this is saying is, is that every instance of this class, I might have 20 different foo objects in memory, and all 20 of them are gonna share this variable that we call count, okay? Now, if I wanna initialize count to something, okay, it's since, since a static variable doesn't belong to any single instance, belongs to all of them, right? You, you don't initialize it within uh, the class itself, you know, like say in a, in a constructor. What you do is, is you come outside of the class and you use that same kind of trick where you specify the name of the class, the double colons, and then the uh, variable name, okay? So I'll initialize that to uh, zero. And then I'll go add a method to uh, my foo, okay? So static int um, get, we'll call it get, okay? And we'll just return the count variable, okay? So now I can access this count variable using the static method, and I don't even have to um, create a foo object, okay? So I can just do foo get. Right, because static variable, static method, you know, the variable count exists, there's the zero, um, outside of all instances of the function. And therefore, all instances of the function can access it. And since I can 
use static methods without creating an instance of the class, I can use that to access my account variable. Okay, now so far you're going, okay, that's neat, but what? Well, let's, let me give you a practical example of why this might be useful. Let's say that I add a constructor to my um, class foo, okay? And what you might want to do is, is have that constructor increment the count variable. Okay, so what's that going to do? What that's going to do is, is every single time a new instance of class foo comes into being, right? Whenever an object gets instantiated, that count variable is going to get updated by one, right? Constructor's going to fire once. And so basically what that's doing is, is that is keeping track of how many foo objects there are in memory, right? So remember, I initialized count to zero and you can initialize it to whatever you want, but I set it up that way for this counter example, okay? So I can create foo f, I can create foo g, right? And if I now say c out uh, f dot uh, get, okay? You're gonna see that um, that zero is changed to one because the first instance of that class is constructor fired, right? And it, it incremented count by one. Now, if I do it for uh, G, you're gonna see two because the G foo, right? It's constructor fired and, um, you know, cause count to increment by one. And so there's a count of uh, two foo objects, right? Um, and that's because foo f and foo g both have access to this shared variable and they can do that because we made it static. Okay, we made it static. Now, if you wanted to finish off my example here and, and use that static variable to keep track of how many instances of foo there are in memory, well then you can throw a destructor here and um, you know, have it decrement the count variable. So every time, um, you know, one of these foo objects goes out of scope, the destructor will fire and then subtract one from count, okay? So yeah, I mean, that's, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. Um, static variables, shared across all class instances, okay? Um, static methods, methods that can be executed um, with or without the object for that class being instantiated. That's it. Okay. All right. Thanks for watching. Okay. So that's going to bring this video to a close. If you felt that the video was useful, please consider giving the video a thumbs up. And if you thought that the video sucked, well, then you've got that thumbs down button as an option as well. If you'd like to see more videos, if you're interested in more content from the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button. And as usual, if you're a student of mine, and you have further questions, feel free to drop me an email or to stop by my office hours. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.